Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to wrap up our uh, look at the periodic table. Make sure you go all the way through to the end because there are several examples at the very end of how I test these concepts. Our objectives include recognizing the uh, repetition of properties in the periodic table, classifying an element as a metal, metalloid, or nonmetal, and classifying an element by a whole bunch of other groupings such as alkali metal, main group, rare earth, actinide, there's a whole bunch of those. I'd like you to uh, take a moment and um, check out this video. Uh, it's going to give you a very clear example of why we call the elements that are in the same column a family. Um, so please pause this and go, go check that out. All right, hopefully you watched that video. And um, so the alkali metals all show the same pattern of reactivity with water, which is pretty impressive. Um, and so they all do the same reaction, but there's an additional trend that as you move down the periodic table, the reactions get uh, much more exciting. Um, and this will happen because they all have that same final subshell in their electron configuration, NS1. Um, and then the, the reaction gets more vigorous as you go down the table um, because the uh, valence electron is it getting to be in larger and larger orbitals, which makes it farther away from the nucleus, which makes it easier to react. And so it's easier to react, it reacts much more vigorously, and you see that progression as you move down the table. There are a number of family groupings um, in the periodic table. Uh, the first column, starting with lithium and moving on down, is known as the alkali metals. They're shown in purple here, sort of uh, salmon or coral color for group two. They're known as the alkaline earths. Then the entire D block is known as the transition metals. Um, the families that start with boron, carbon, and nitrogen are usually just referred to as those families, boron family, carbon family, nitrogen family. Then the family that starts with oxygen is referred to as the chalcogens. Uh, the family that starts with fluorine, those are the halogens. And then the last column is the noble gases. Additionally, down on the very bottom in the F block, the top row of the F block is referred to as the lanthanides, um, and the bottom row is referred to as the actinides. Lanthanide and actinide come from elements 57 and 89 in the periodic table, uh, lanthanum and actinium, because if we were to blow apart the periodic table and insert the lanthanides and actinides where they really go, um, we would put them right there, right after lanthanum and actinium. This question wants to know which element is the most similar to phosphorus? Well, similar properties will be found in the same column or the same family in the periodic table. So what we're really asking for here is which element is in the same column as phosphorus? And if none of these are in the same column, then which one is closest uh, to being in the same column with phosphorus? So if you find phosphorus over in the periodic table, it's in group number uh, 15. And let's see, silicon is in group 14, uh, potassium is way over in group 1, and then arsenic is also in group 15, right under phosphorus. So the best answer here is arsenic. Another big important grouping of elements in the periodic table is breaking them down into metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. The metalloids are this purple diagonal over in the P block uh, that separate the metals from the nonmetals. Um, they run along that uh, diagonal stair step, and on our periodic table that you can use on tests, they'll be shaded gray. Uh, to the right of the metalloids are the metals, uh, I'm sorry, the nonmetals. 
And there's one huge exception to that, which is hydrogen. Um, hydrogen is in group number one over there above the alkali metals, but hydrogen is actually a nonmetal. So make sure that you always remember that guy's a nonmetal, even though it's stuck on the wrong section of the periodic table. All of the rest of the elements in the table are metals and they're shaded in blue. So the vast majority of elements in the table are metals. Um, a much smaller number are nonmetals, and then a very small number are metalloids. Now I did leave one element um, in um, unshaded down here, element number 118. This element has only recently been discovered, and as I was doing research on it, to determine since it's right here where metals, metalloids, and nonmetals come together, <clears throat> I was doing research to try to determine which one it will be, and uh, um, there are um, some calculations that indicate that it might actually be a metal. And since nobody has uh, prepared enough of it, and its uh, most stable isotope doesn't last very long, um, we just really don't know yet. So that'll be interesting to watch over the next few years um, to see with element number 118 if uh, we're going to decide that's a metal um, or a non-metal. This coloring of the periodic table shows three additional big groupings within the table. If we look at the S and P blocks together, those are referred to as main group elements. The D block is known as the transition elements, and the F block is known as the rare earth elements. We group together the S and P blocks because together, um, if you were to add up, if you were to completely fill an S and a P subshell that requires eight electrons, two from the S and six from the P, and that forms the foundation of something we call the octet rule. Um, lots of stable compounds will be formed when each element in the compound is surrounded by eight valence electrons. Um, and so that rule is followed by elements in the uh, main group elements. This question is asking, which element is a halogen in the third period? So I'm asking you to put several things together. First of all, you have to know where the halogens are in the periodic table, as well as identifying the third period. So a period is a horizontal row. And the third period means it's the third one down from the top. Uh, the halogens are group 17. So we're looking for the uh, element in the third row of the table that is in uh, group number 17, the halogens, and that looks like it's going to be chlorine. So chlorine is on the third row of the table in the halogens. So which element is a metal in group number 14? So we need to find group number 14. Um, that is the uh, group that has carbon at the top. And thinking about where are the metals, that will be the um, elements that are down at the very bottom of that particular column. And so that's looking like lead. Lead is a metal in group number 14. So our big objective for this section was to recognize all of these groupings, metals, metalloids, nonmetals, all the family names like alkali metals, noble gases, um, and then some of the um, other large groupings like main group elements.